All right, yesterday was the last day of working on the clay, but overnight, while I'm sitting here looking at the photographs I took of the clay, um, I noticed something I don't like. Every, everything on this shield is going in a horizontal line. And we've got one, two, three horizontals, and that's just too many horizontals. Uh, for me. And what I want to do is have this feather uh, go up at that angle and that gives a nice flow also re re repeats the uh, direction the, the it warrior is going in. So I don't like this feather either and that was another thing. Uh, the feather uh, actually the sides I was, should be using is this side but because I ran out of uh, feathers for this side, which needed to be turned in, not turned out, and whenever I tried to bend the feather, uh, it just didn't work because it wasn't made for that. Uh, so I'm going to redo this feather. I've also got to do some feathers for the uh, spear, which I've cut off. I've cut the hand off. That's where they're going to have to cut it off anyway. And uh, I'm going to do a couple of feathers on here, maybe a scalp lock. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I've got to make it so that it's there, but it's not going to add a great deal to the cost of producing the clay, so I've got to be very careful. And so, and if you notice, I've cut this part of the wolf skin off. This is how they're going to line up the uh, spear the way it's supposed to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start making the uh, feathers uh, and uh, the scalp lock and all that other stuff. Um, so when you think you're done, sometimes you just ain't. I'm sorry, I thought I was recording and I guess I forgot to hit the record button so the camera just turned itself off. I just made two blanks uh, for the uh, feathers on the uh, spear. This is the one that was on the spear. And I wanted to match the, the size. And I cut two lengths of uh, armature material, which is uh, baling wire, to... Uh, go into those feathers. I'm going to put that aside now. This is the feather that's going to be on the, uh, the shield. And I'm going to do that one now. And I had to work out the curve ahead of time because it's got to be curved. It's a uh, it's the type of feather that's being used. And uh, so that's all I'm doing right now is shaping this piece of dark wax. This is a uh, victory brown wax. You can get it, it from most foundries that deal with uh, art work or art, art bronzes. They uh, use it in pouring waxes into the uh, rubber mold and then they clean up the wax and then they make a ceramic mold of this. And so that's why I'm it's very soft, uh, it's easy to use, and uh, but you still have to know what you're doing because it has a tendency to, if you overheat it, it gets granulated and and uh, so you got to be careful how much you heat it. You want it just hot enough. All right. Anyway, what I'm doing is just heating up the wire and then I press it into the uh, wax and that seals it in the wax. Of course, it helps to have wax off my tool. There we go. And what that does, it welds the armature into the wax. Yeah, you should hold this with a tool because if you don't, you're going to burn your fingers because wire does transfer heat. You can be sitting there. Oops, I guess I better get it the other way. Oh, now you're not going to work, you little bugger. There we go. I used a blade of the uh, X Acto knife to move the uh, wire down into the uh, wax. You don't want to do that with your finger because it would hurt. First thing I do is I try to thin it out a little bit and angle this side of my sculpting tool down towards the uh, 
board to give it kind of like a uh, V shape to the uh, feather. Now what I do is I curl up the feather on this edge because that's the, the, the way these feathers are and this edge would be curled down at the edge. And that's just the way these feathers are constructed. And instead of putting a quill down, I'm going to just sculpt a quill if I can. It's always harder to work in dark wax because it's hard to see detail. And what I mean by serrated edge, it's got a, a tooth on the end of it, or around the edge of it, that gives a texture. Show wear and tear on the feather, so I am going to cut out a couple of V-shaped wedges. There we go. All right, now I've got this paint that I, I've told, explained before, that I had, had uh, matched to the color of the clay. And I put this onto the uh, feathers because I don't want the eye to be confused. All right, while I'm waiting for the uh, other two feathers to dry, I'm going to go ahead and attach this feather here like that. As I've said before, the key of filling in is to fill in without uh, making it look obvious that you filled it in. And uh, that just makes it easier for the f mold maker. And uh, it's a little less costly for the artist. Now I'll do the same thing on this feather. I will paint it. There we go. It's finished. Now it's finished. <laughs> Before it wasn't quite. All right. Have a great night. I'll uh, be on the road tomorrow to the foundry and uh, I'll show what I can. If I don't have anything to show, I'm not going to bother. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. Take it to the foundry tomorrow. Good night, everybody. good. Whoop, I need to put a little more texture into that right there. Forgot this feather.